Hi, my name is Geert de Ron and I'm a cloud security architect at Checkpoint. In this video, I'm going to show you how CloudGuard AppSec is able to block an attack against the vulnerability in the Java logging package called Log4j. The vulnerability has been identified as CVE 2021-44228 and it has been named Log4Shell. It is a zero-day vulnerability which received a severity score of 10, which is the highest score a vulnerability can have. CloudGuard AppSec is the only solution that provided protection against this zero day and the subsequent zero days in the Log4j because it uses advanced learning engines and doesn't need any signatures like a traditional web application firewall to protect against these attacks. If you'd like to know more about the Log4j vulnerabilities and what makes AppSec the only solution that is able to preemptively block the attacks, you can read more on the Checkpoint blog by visiting blog.checkpoint.com or by scanning the QR code on your screen that will link you to the AppSec article. In the architecture of the demo, there is a vulnerable web server hosted on a Linux machine. The web service is published to the outside world with an Nginx reverse proxy. For the sake of the demo, the Nginx and the web server application run on the same machine. We are going to use an attacker machine to exploit the log4j vulnerability and collect a file with credit card information installed on the web server. After a successful attempt, we are going to install the AppSec Nano Agent on the Nginx reverse proxy. The Nano Agent will block a second attempt of the malicious request without any signature matching or manual updates to the security. So first, the attacker sends an HTTP GET request to the victim's web server with a malicious payload. The payload is inserted into an HTTP header and is encoded in a Base64 format. The web server processes the web request and creates a connection to the attacker's endpoint via the LDAP protocol. The malicious payload instructs the victim server to upload a file with credit card information which is stored on the victim's web server and it sends it to the attacker's endpoint. Finally, the attacker will receive the file with credit card information from the victim's web server and the attack is successful. Before we move into the demo, let's dive a bit deeper into how AppSec handles an HTTP request. After installation of the AppSec Nano Agent, CloudGuard AppSec will use its machine learning engine to analyze all relevant fields including the HTTP headers and match them against potential attack indicators. An attack indicator is a pattern of exploiting vulnerabilities from various families. The attack patterns are based on ongoing offline supervised learning of many payloads that are each assigned a score to the likelihood of being malicious or benign. The result is a score that represents the confidence level that this pattern is part of an attack. The log 4 shell attack has several indicators from command injection and remote code execution families that signal the payload to be malicious with a very high score. However, to ensure accuracy and keep the level of false positives to a minimum, the engine moves to the last phase where the contextual evaluation engines make a final determination whether the payload is malicious or not. The result is a confidence risk score that is larger than the threshold and the request is dropped. Now let's have a look at the attack scenario without any protection in place. First, we need to log on to the attacker's machine. I'm going to open three SSH shells for the attack. The tool Tmux is ideal to run multiple SSH shells in a single putty window. The first SSH shell will run an LDAP server as part of a Java application. It will listen to the LDAP requests coming from the victim's server. The second SSH shell will run a web server that will print the credit card information once the victim is exploited. I use a Python script that will run a small web server on the attacker's machine that listens on port 999. The third SSH shell is used to execute the attack string. At first, I'm going to use the curl command to verify if you have connectivity to the web server. Once the web server returns an HTTP status code 400, this means that the connectivity to the web server is successful. Next, I'm going to use the same curl command, but I'm going to add an HTTP header with our attack string. The attack string is going to instruct the victim's web server to upload a file with credit card information 
to the locally hosted web server on the attacker's machine. The second SSH shell prints the body of the HTTP POST request, which shows the sensitive credit card information uploaded by the victim's web server. The attack is successful. In the next part of the demo, I'm going to configure the CloudGuard AppSec Nano agent and install it on the Nginx reverse proxy. First, I need to log on to the Checkpoint Infinity portal at portal.checkpoint.com and I navigate to the application security, which is part of the CloudGuard family. The first thing that I have to configure is an asset. An asset represents the web application server that we're going to protect. I need to give it the name, I need to configure the stage, and I need to configure an application URL that the web application server listens to. I will include the URL with port 1890. Next, I need to configure the security I want to activate on the Nano agent. I choose to configure the machine learning engine into prevent mode and the IPS engine into detect mode. This allows me to demonstrate that the attack is prevented by the machine learning engine. In a production environment, you want both capabilities in prevent mode. We don't have to configure trusted users for the demo, so we leave it as default. And next, I need to choose a deployment type. I'm going to install AppSec on a Linux agent. So I select Linux deployment method and click next. Once the wizard is successful, I'm redirected to the agent profile page. The agent profile page shows me the commands I need to install the nano agent on a reverse proxy web server. In the first command, I will have to elevate my permissions. The second command will allow me to install the nano agent on the reverse proxy machine. Don't worry about the token being used in this example. I removed the configuration after the demo so the token will no longer exist. Be careful in production environments to not share this token as this is the credential the nano agent uses to connect to the infinity portal. After the installation is successful, I will use the cp nano-s command to verify the installation status. We now need to wait for a couple of minutes until the cp nano-s command shows a ready status for the HTTP transaction handler module of the nano server. I speed up the video for the demo and the HTTP transaction handler is now status ready, which means that the nano agent is successfully installed and ready to protect our web server. Let's move back to the attacker's machine. I clear my previous outputs and restart the HTTP server. Then I reinitiate the attack string. What I see now is that I'm being blocked by a checkpoint nano agent and I'm no longer presented with the sensitive credit card information in the HTTP server's output. Let's have a look at the event log. At the important event tab, I have an overview of all prevented attempts. This specific attempt has a severity critical and an event confidence very high. If we move to the threat prevention section, we can see that the match location was a header. We matched on the X API header and we also matched on a specific sample. The AppSec incident type is, has been identified as a cross-site scripting and remote execution family. The resulted action is prevent and the attack has been blocked. 